Hey, it's Mark Polsky, the Land Geek, with your favorite niche real estate website, www.thelandgeek.com. And on this week's roundtable, we've got the usual suspects. We've got Dude Buddy, the nightcap OG, Scott Bossman. Scott, how are you? Doing great, Mark. Great seeing you. Host Boot Camp San Antonio. And then, of course, we've got the most feared woman in the country, the terrorist hunter, Mimi Schmidt. Mimi, are we safer? Mm, yes, I think we're definitely safer. Nice. All right. Recent nice. That's... events would lead me to believe that we are definitely safer. Wow. That's the first time she said that in years. Yeah, definitively. Wow. Fantastic. <clears throat> We've got the technician, Eric Peterson. Eric, how are you? I'm good. Just uh, getting rested up from uh, the post boot camp hangover. Yeah. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. We've got the Zen master. Breathe in the mailing. Breathe out the marketing. Mike Zeno. Mike, how are you? I'm doing wonderful. Good to see you. And of course, we've got Scott Todd, the brain, the professor, the flight school Sherpa from scotttodd.net, landmoto.com. If you're not automating your Craigslist and your Facebook postings, hostingdomination.com forward slash the land geek. Learn anything about anything investor ninjas. Dot com. Scott Todd, how are you? Mark, I'm great. How are you? I'm great. We've got a really great uh, topic that we are going to discuss today. But before we do, I'm just going to just in one sentence, go around and ask everybody, what was their favorite sort of moment at San Antonio boot camp? Scott Bossman. I love meeting the people that I've spoken with on the phone uh, in the past few months who I've had the pleasure of maybe facilitating their journey in some regard. That's my, my favorite part. Fantastic. Eric Peterson. Well, first of all, you have the hotel. I think it's the best hotel we go to. Um, so that's awesome. But, uh, you know, kind of like Scott said, I think seeing the people, uh, seeing my coaching students in person, uh, as well as the other coaching students getting to meet, all the new people that are, um, you know, toolkit people, flight school people, et cetera. Um, it's just a good time. Yeah, absolutely. Mimi Schmidt, how about you? I agree with Eric. It's so great to see, uh, to meet everyone, and particularly my coaching students. And the, the highlight of the weekend for me was watching Larry Overstreet get three sales in four days. And he messaged me this morning for four. So three Facebook sales, one Craigslist sale. I'm so excited for them. Wow. I love it. Zen Master, how about you? Uh, in one sentence? In one sentence. Um, wow. I don't know if I can do it in one sentence. Uh, well, you know, you know, I always say the, the community and all that coming together. So that's kind of cliche. I can't say that. I can say seeing all you guys, but, you know, that's already been said. Um, you know, I, I don't, I just, probably the biggest thing that I've noticed is, is the, and in this boot camp was evident is this the amount of success we've created in people's lives. So, you know, people that, you know, we literally 2019 was insane for the land geek in terms of how it changed people's lives from flight school, right through coaching. And uh, those people were there when you see uh, Jen and Tyler get up there and how, you know, that one, two punch of flight school and coaching has impacted their lives that it's just, um, you know, it's proof of concept, overwhelming. So that, I think that that's overwhelming. That's yeah. Overwhelming proof of concept. Scott Todd, how about you? You know, it's always cool for me uh, to see people in flight school and uh, you know, they, they go through flight school or they're in flight school. They're here at boot camp. It's really kind of cool to see um, kind of their takeaways from boot camp. Also to see them face to face as opposed to through a video monitor. That's always kind of cool. But I think that the most important thing or the thing I enjoy the most is when I have the opportunity to see or hear about the success stories that people are having from flight school, the flight school students. You know, like, like the Kellys, for example, the land duo, who, who did 100 deals in their first year, first year after, boot, uh, after flight school, 100 deals. And, uh, you know, um, uh, that's just one example, right? Like you, you hear all these stories and you see what people are doing. It's really, really incredible to know that I had some portion or some involvement in helping them to shape the life that they wanted. That, that just makes me feel good. Yeah. I mean, I, you know, to piggyback on that, I think that's really for me why I love boot camp is that 
mission of mine to be that pebble in the pond, make an impact and watch how it ripples out and affects, you know, not their lives, but everyone in their lives that they touch, whether it's somebody texting me saying, Hey, I can't believe what, a, what, you know, a powerful impact you've made on my life. And, you know, my girlfriend's now mad at, mad at me because you've had a bigger impact on my life than her, you know, something like that. Or, um, you know, having somebody say, you know, you know, sort of the, the abundance mentality resonating with them and just the little bits of sharing here and there on how, you know, what we're going through together as a group impacts them by the end of the weekend. And yeah, of course, I love the success stories. Of course, I love seeing all the, the people and it becomes just so much more real. But then on Sunday, when we finally end the FAQ session, and there's no more questions and we know, okay, everyone's got it. Uh, I, I love that, that, that just any last questions and it's just silence. It's, it's so gratifying for me. Um, it's, it's amazing. All right. We covered San Antonio bootcamp. If you don't know what we're talking about, go to landgeek.com forward slash bootcamp. The next one is mid April in Phoenix, Arizona. So don't miss it for sure. So this is going to be a really interesting uh, topic today for the round table because last week we talked about, you know, the, the things that, you know, we struggled with when we got started. So today we want to talk about what rituals or what superpowers did, do we think that we had um, that really helped propel us into the success that we have today meaning that we work when we want, where we want, and with whom we want. And so I play this game with my kids, and I'll ask my uh, children to say, okay, do you know your sibling's favorite food? Do you know your sibling's best friend? And it's really fun because sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. So instead of just asking them directly, what was the superpower that um, you thought you had, or what ritual do you think got you to where you are today, we're going to ask each other to comment on what we think the other person's uh, superpower is and then see how close we were. So we'll start with Scott Todd. Scott Todd, what do you think was Mimi Schmidt's superpower in the beginning that got her to financial freedom and time freedom today? Okay, so first, let, let's set the, the table the the right way you see a lot of times people look at at it from a very fast pace like you know oh we always joke like you took 18 months to replace your income i took 17 months and three days beating you by what 27 days it's okay mark it's all right but that said we're proud yeah yeah right but that said like everybody thinks of this as a rush right and the reality is is that it's not always a rush that's an artificial time horizon that we put on ourselves I probably would would have taken longer had it not been for my company like kicking me out the door uh, when they outsourced the job. So you know it's it, it's all relative. Now, the I think what Mimi did was she she slowly and methodically built her business. Right, she didn't do it in seventeen months and three days. She didn't make that jump. It doesn't really matter. Time is is artificial. However, what she did do is she went to every boot camp while she was in this business. And while she was there, she treated that time as almost like a corporate retreat. I see people go to boot camp. They do a little bit of work on their business. They socialize and network. They, they visit the town to do whatever. Not Mimi. Let me tell you what Mimi did. Mimi went to the boot camp. She listened to the sessions, the VIP room sessions. She took the, the lesson. She took that to heart. She went and she executed on it. And she completely, slowly, and methodically removed herself from the company so that it was almost self-sustaining without her. And that's what allowed her to kind of break that, that freedom. And not just the financial freedom component of it, but the time freedom of it. All right, Mimi, how, how accurate do you think Scott Todd is on his assessment of your superpower? I think he's right. I didn't have time when I was at home to get those things done. So literally those open sessions, I would go to the business center uh, or just a chair outside the, um, the VIP room and just get stuff done, get stuff done. Um, completely agree. All right. One for one. Do I get a point wow. or something? You get a point. 
All right, I got a point. Um, this could be like a talk show. So Mimi Schmidt, what do you think is Eric's superpower? What ritual do you think he engaged in that allowed him his massive success? I believe that Eric has, from the beginning and now, has developed a niche with technology. He's really good with Slack and Gmail and using tools to help him get the job done every day. And so, and so we all depend on him now for a lot of these things too, to figure out, well, what's Eric doing, right? And he's even got his own segment, right? Um, a video even on how to do a lot of these things too uh, for VIPs. But that's what I think it is technology yeah I'm, I'm pushing eric 2020 to do a course on all his geeky all his geekiness and the tools he uses and his workflows to help with the automation piece so eric do you agree with mimi's assessment of your superpower i do i i think that um maybe early on in the business it might have been a little bit different but I think um, I definitely morphed into that. Um, looking back, I feel like maybe a, another contributing factor was just kind of a, a devotion to um, finding a way to make the business work. And what that meant for me, I had a full-time job. So every night, every weekday night, after my kids went to bed, I would devote a couple hours to this business without fail. And I think, you know, it was that dedication that brought me to a point where, you know, I saw the potential in the business and could take it further. All right. Two for two. I love it. Okay. So Eric Peterson, you get, you've got me. What, what do you think was my superpower in the beginning? Now you didn't know me in the beginning, but just from all the stories or what rituals do you think I engaged in that allowed me to quit my investment banking job in 18 months. Look, in a way I have the hardest one because I wasn't there, but I think there's some things that, that we could all see. I mean, first of all, Mark, I, you saw the opportunity in the land business, right? You, you learned about it, you saw the potential and you took it and you ran with it. You took this, this little bitty niche and you developed it on your own and eventually, you decided that uh, you're going to share it with the rest of the world. And, and you opened up and had this abundance mentality and we're willing to, to share that with everybody and build a community. So I think it goes from opportunity to, to community. I, I think you're dead, dead on actually. And I think that one of the things that I think helped me in the beginning was <laughs> this ready fire aim approach. Like I saw the opportunity and I just did it. And then done I started better than perfect. Done was better than perfect. And I just started going like, Oh wait. And then slowly started seeing things where I could improve. But once I saw that opportunity, I hit it and I hit it as hard as I could because I was in so much, you know, pain with my job. Like this, I saw, Oh my gosh, here's my way out. And I took, you know, action like, you know, my life depended on it, which at the time it, it felt like it did. So nice job, Eric Peterson. Um, wow, everyone's dead on on this. So Zeno, <laughs> the Zen master, let's, 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 let's ask I'm you about the, the dude, bu dude buddy, the nightcap OG. What's, what do you think was Scott Bossman's superpower or ritual that, that helped get him to, uh, living the, the life of his dreams. Yeah, re retiring from his job in just a few short years. Um, honestly, I think of Scott, I think he's like the master of getting things done, honestly. Like I, I, I know him uh, for many years now and it's one thing I noticed, no matter what it is related to the land business, um, he just gets it done. He, whatever time it takes, whatever effort it takes, he gets it done. Um, you know, he's, he's dedicated to the implementation of whatever, you know, process needs to be done. And so I, I just think he's a master of, getting things done, you know? And also, um, you know, I love the fact that, you know, all of us here, all family people, right? And I know the time that Scott in the beginning had to carve out for his, you know, out of his schedule. He had, uh, you know, uh, he's raising kids, he's working a full-time job, and yet he believes in this 
this this uh, idea of the passive income and the land investing. So he he carves out the time to do that. And also, I actually have uh, I have I. I I looked at some spirit animals and I think uh, yours, Scott, and I actually got all of you, if you're interested, we could do that. It takes two seconds. But <laughs> Scott, don't laugh now, because this is good. I, I would say yours is the buffalo, and this is why. It says, endurance to overcome, great emotional courage, and provider to all. So I think that's, uh, you know, your spirit animal is the buffalo. And I think that speaks uh, very uh, true to what you are. I love that. Scott Bossman, how accurate do you think Mike is of his assessment. I, I love the Buffalo term. I'm from South Dakota, right? The, the native American term for Buffalo is Tatanka, right? You are Tatanka. And, uh, Tatanka. Tatanka. Yeah. I think, I think Mike's, Mike's pretty on. Um, I, I, I look back at the ritual or maybe my superpower, if you want to call it. And I would say that I was, I was effective at carving out time to make this happen. And I just, I, I kind of went into it, or I, I always had the mindset that I, I need, I would need to work really hard in the present to make life better in the future. And um, so I, I was very dedicated to carving out the time to do this. Uh, and I, I think what really um, propelled me into dedicating more time into this was just doing my first deal. You know, from the time I got the toolkit mark to the time I did my first deal, I think was two months. And to see that that process worked uh, and to see that I turned $700 into $2,800, man, that motivates somebody to change your life. Because if I can do it one time, I can do it 20, 50, 100 times, whatever, uh, and I'm going to change my life. So that, that was, the, that was the, the thing for me. I'm, I'm, I carved the time out and then just the motivation to, to move forward for my family uh, was the other thing that was, was keeping me going. All right. Fantastic. So now I get to assess what I think was this Scott Todd's superpower or ritual that really propelled him, obviously to beat me, replace his income 17 months and three days and not, and not an easy income to replace being a fortune 300 executive uh, VP. So I do tell a, a story about this at boot camp. So I don't want to repeat it right now. You got to come to boot camp. But I will say, just to shorten that, I think that there are two components that Scott Todd has as superpowers. The first one being company building or infrastructure building. He's very comfortable at getting himself and not being the bottleneck and finding people and team building and having people being laser focused on accomplishing his goal. And then the second one, and I think it just goes along with this, is I've never seen anyone execute the way Scott, Todd's, Scott Todd executes in, in the manner of just, boy, you think that there's just no, no time like that day. I mean, he just gets it done so quickly, so efficiently. Um, it's, it's amazing uh, to watch. I mean... I, I couldn't be more jealous of that of that trait too, but um, it's it's amazing to witness. Scott Todd, how cl how close am I? Um, yeah, I, I would I would agree with you. I I do believe in executing, and at the same time, I do think that um, it's important that as you get going in this business, one of the things that I did was I continued to make sales and buy and doing all that stuff, but then. I spent hours behind the scenes quietly building out my team, right? Like I, I got to the point where I'm like, okay, I have enough of this concept to know it. I'm going to build out the team to go do it. And I built out the team that allowed me to kind of like take that, that growth and just like launch it when it was, when it was time. So we, you know, during that time you and I built uh, LG pass. Um, but I was just laying the foundation to, to just launch at a super fast pace. And I think that's a big deal. No, it, it's, it's huge. It's absolutely huge. So I think this is a really interesting topic. And I think hopefully the listeners are getting uh, lots of value out of it. You, I thought we did Zeno. No, I got to do Zeno yet. I skipped Zeno? Yeah. Oh, holy cow. Scott Bossman, what, what's Zeno's superpower? Oh, I was oh, going boy. through a list. I skipped him. I'm sorry, Mike. <laughs> 
No offense taken. <laughs> I used to think I was wicked smart. Now I, I'm reevaluating all of it. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, when I think about Mike, he is the king of ritual, right? Now there are some rituals he might do for a little while, and then he switches to the next one, and he switches to the next one. But his first year in the land business, I mean, he – he stayed the he stayed the course, right? He had he, and he talks about this all the time. So I know I can I, I know I can be open about this. He had he had forty thousand dollars in credit card debt, right? And and his his ultimate goal was to erase that debt. So what did he do? He stayed the course. He stayed in the lane. He he did wholesale deal after wholesale deal after wholesale deal. He might have made a couple hundred bucks on a wholesale deal. It didn't matter. Uh, his ritual was just repetition and mailing and marketing and getting it done. And that had to have been the most amazing feeling in the world when you did, did that, Mike, for you and your family. So, you know, just the dedication to your family and doing that as well. So uh, I think, you know, staying the course is, was a huge thing for Mike getting into this. Mike, how, how accurate do you think Scott Boston was? Yeah, I think he's spot on. Yeah, it was uh, just followed one method that I knew worked. I didn't kind of vary from that. Um, it, was a, it was a niche within a niche, and it, it served its purpose very well. Absolutely. Yeah, I remember having you on the podcast, and I, I made the argument that I thought being a firefighter gave you a distinct advantage in this business because our, our natural inclination when things when there's danger is to run away. And yours is, I'm going to go in. <laughs> and having that sort of cor- courageousness, um, and ability to to do something that is really really hard, and putting your life on the line every single day. Well, when you juxtapose those two things, everything else looks super easy. <laughs> that that was my thought. No, 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 yeah. I mean, it's it was it's a it was an incredible challenge coming to this business. Um, but I can tell you that uh, you know having groups of people like this and. Uh, at the time, Mark, just, I know bouncing off of you, the biggest thing that you taught was how to remove that scarcity mentality because I was like, I could do this or that. And you're like, yeah, do both. And I'm like, what? No, I could do this or that. Yeah, do both. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, well, great. Well, okay, now I think it was a great roundtable discussion. But before we go to our tip of the week, and my, come on, you got to give us the rest of our spirit animals. Um, oh. I just want to, thank the listeners and just remind them that all of this financial freedom to work when you want, where you want, with whom you want, is it within your grasp. And within 16 weeks, you can start building the infrastructure to making a passive income of 10,000 or more within 12 to 18 months. But to learn how to do that, you've got to get on a call with the Zen master, Mike Zeno, or the nightcap OG, dude buddy, Scott Bossman, Learn more about Flight School. Have Scott Todd take you up that mound of land investing quickly, efficiently, safely. 16 weeks. Just go to landgeek.com forward slash training. All right, Mimi Schmidt. It is that time for the tip of the week. A website, a resource, a book, something actionable for the art of passive income listeners to go improve their businesses, improve their lives. What do you got? Okay. I have two tips that I'm giving before. That have I have a new use for at boot camp. Jen and Ken, Jen and Tyler Kelly asked me if I knew how to download Facebook Messenger conversations because Jen wanted to take some of her successful Messenger conversations, that conversational selling, um, download it and use it for training purposes because she's looking at delegating out that Facebook uh, sales side. So this messenger messages saver for Facebook that I've given out before, offered by Fatty No Parents, um, it only costs three ninety nine, uh, and yes, it's offered by Fatty No Parents. But I've never had a problem in the two and a half years I've had it on the machine with it. It's a Google Chrome extension, and you just press on the person that you're talking with, and you press that extension, and it downloads the whole conversation from um, from it can tell the beginning to the end the date range uh, and puts it in your downloads. So great way um, to use that for to teach new VAs. Okay. And then the other one is, and I know you guys are like, yeah, whatever. The um, HubSpot sales blog. This, I get so much great information out of this. 
This one, this week, it is the ultimate guide to objection handling, 40 common sales objections and how to respond. So that I love, I love that. I'm actually gonna do some role playing maybe with my husband or my son, have them give me some of these objections and practice my responses. So if you wanna improve your sales, uh, that's it. check out that article. That's amazing. I know this would be a great round table discussion is our most common objections and how we handle them. Wow, Mimi, phenomenal. Eric Schmidt, what do you think? Eric Schmidt? I mean, Eric Peterson, what do you think? <laughs> Dave Schmidt, my apologies. You caught me off guard there. Look, um, these, these tips I'm, are so good, it's got Mark confused. Yeah. It really does, like yeah. It. You know, <clears throat> I've been um, sharing some of these HubSpot articles with my sales assistant uh, more recently. Since Mimi's last tip, I've started kind of passing some of them along to her. Um, I think it's good knowledge to, uh, you know, pass along to our team and, and for me as well. Wow, this is great. Number 40 is uh, I hate you as the yeah. objection. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> That's great. Um, yeah, this Another is great. Recent. Another one, recent one they had was um, sales plan. What's your sales plan? It's the beginning of the year. What's your plan? Mimi, you're just on fire. You're, you're making life too easy for Eric Peterson. Or Eric Schmidt, whichever we're, we're going to, you know. My, um, my, my third tip of the week is don't volunteer to do the tip of the week. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that is a great tip. That is a great tip. All right. So Mike Zeno, what are your thoughts? I just love hitting that raise your hand button on Zoom. It's like my favorite thing to do. I feel like I'm back in school. But I, I'll, I'll give you the animals real quick. Mimi. Okay. So Mimi, now don't listen, don't let the animal name sway any of you. It's what it represents. So armadillo, Mimi, it's slow, sure of yourself, slow, sure of yourself, in no hurry, keeper of the house. Because I think about Mimi, and uh, Scott, you brought that up, right? She's on, she just was just methodical, right? Just kept uh, on that track and kept hitting it. So uh, that's the armadillo. Uh, let's see. Armadillo's uh, tough. Armadillo yes, tough. yes. <laughs> Eric, elk. Elk, teaches that pacing yourself will increase your stamina. Eric's all about systems and, and getting things going and pacing it so it happens automatically. So I, I think that the elk would represent, well, it does represent that. So that's very good. Tate's not here, but uh, I, but Tate, since you'll listen to this, come on, Tate, it's, it's the butterfly, but listen to what the butterfly is before you get all, I know he's probably like, butterfly, it's the art of transformation, the ability to know where change the mind. He changes people's minds of what is possible. Like, think about it, right? They, they, they go in, they, they uh, you know, I don't know if we can do this. And now he has people replacing their income and, and uh, achieving great things. So uh, Tate, that would be the butterfly. So two left, Scott. Uh, Todd would be the eagle and not the, not because he flies in the sky either, but that does match it. It says creator, teacher, a loyalty, integrity, spiritual connection to the great divine. So he's everybody's connector to all of this knowledge, right? And, uh, you know, he's the teacher. And so I think that fits uh, well for him. And finally, Mark, I debated over this one, but um, I settled in on the uh, mountain lion. And the reason is it's the power of leadership. Ability to lead without insisting others follow. And I think that's huge because we say this time and time again, we're not in the convincing business. This is something that we know works insanely well. And if people want and they want to learn how we do it, we offer it to them, but we don't try to convince them. You lead by not asking those to follow. So I think that fits you. Thank you. I, I appreciate it. I'm going to actually start adopting that. And um, I'm going to have everyone starting calling me the mountain lion. <laughs> So the land geek is retired <laughs> and now the mountain lion. So learn more at the mountain <laughs> And, um, you know, if, in fact, if, if you're getting value from the podcast, all you have to do is three little favors. You got to subscribe, rate, 
and review the podcast. Send us a screenshot of that review to support at thelandgeek.com. And uh, we're going to send you for free the $97 Passive Income Launch Kit course, as well as the new wholetailing course, How to Double Your Money, 30 Days or Less. And um, yeah, I thought this was great. So are we good? Great. Right, let's do this. One, two, three. Let, Let freedom, freedom ring. ring. That, that does remind me what I, one thing I love about boot camp is doing that live. It is just without all the, with all of us in one room, it's so bang, bang, bang. It's awesome. It's good. Even, but Mimi Peterson liked it. <laughs> got stop it. Listen, Eric's wife's gonna listen to this, and she's gonna, he's gonna be like, she's gonna be like, what gives? And then Mimi's husband's gonna listen to this, and they're gonna be like, what? You're creating controversy when you say that. Yeah, but if they've been listening to the podcast at all, they know that I'm I'm really, you know, showing like I have so many senior moments now. If they're like, well, of course he's saying that because he can't even think of like normal words anymore. Like, how's he supposed to get somebody's last name right? Just like. Jen and Kelly, right? Yep. Uh, yeah, I said Jen and Kelly. Yeah, for Jen and Tyler. <laughs> you know. That's a great question, Mark. Who, how, how many of our significant others actually watch the podcast? That's a great poll. I'm curious. I don't think mine, I don't know. I don't know if she watches. I would say probably not. Anybody my, else? No, my, you know, my wife is here to keep me humble. So... <laughs> She, I don't Eric? think she does. Oh, no. Mimi? Nope. Scott? Sometimes. Scott times two? What about, what about Nightcap for you guys? Do they watch Nightcap? Sometimes. Occasionally, yeah. Yeah. That's because that's they probably look what goofs. <laughs> I think, yeah. think well, Anne Marie uh, watches with, uh, with yeah. Matt Fortune 500 Forbes. Yeah. yeah. I've she supports. Seen more. And Dave will watch because a lot of times we'll be together at 10 o'clock, like watching TV or in the car, and I'll have it on. So oh. he'll be giggling. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. What, what, is, what does Dave drink while he watches Nightcap? Glass of red wine. Glass of red wine. What about Laura? Yeah, red wine. Red wine? What about Aaron? Uh, either red wine or a little vodka drink. Nice. Eric, I'd imagine if Sonia watched Nightcap, what would she drink? <laughs> it would probably be water. Water. Okay. Excellent. While, while doing yoga. Mm-hmm. Phenomenal. Exactly. Scott Todd, what about Christine? Would she uh, listen uh, to the podcast or she or doesn't, watch Nightcap? Uh, she doesn't, but if she did, she'd probably do it while uh, drinking some Prosecco. Nice, nice. My wife would actually drink scotch if she wow. went to Nightcap. Yeah. yeah. Or, or, or red wine. Depends. I, I only drink so. a bottle of scotch. That's it for every Nightcap. For <laughs> <laughs> episode? For episode. Yes. Wow. Nice. Well, when, when Tate comes back next week, I am so excited to debate our our next bonus content because it's it's just so good i think he so, made up i think he made up this doctor's appointment so he didn't have to be here today because he knew it was coming could be. yeah but he does have mimi in his corner i just put mine back enough oh, so you can't tell about, i can't tell about no, 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 no 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 i didn't do it this time either no no stop mute Mute. Yeah. Next time. Next Mute. Time. We'll edit this out. We'll edit be this continued. Out. <laughs> continued. What's Mimi talking about? Mark. Tune in next week. You took a poll. Tune I it. thought everybody's. I thought it was overwhelming. Nobody listened to the after. Didn't you ask that at the? Oh, that's right. Nobody listens to the bonus content. Maybe no, some, people people I know, some people do. I know some people do. Yes, they do. Yeah, we should just start a new podcast of just bonus content. Like I think uh, David Bryden had mentioned something in the, in the Facebook group about talk more about intermittent fasting and uh, 
what, what oh, like cold was it cold showers or something? I forgot. Yeah. So I can tell someone, if he's serious or not. Talk more about flying. Yeah. Yeah. I think people like this bonus piece, but it's hard to know. You know, if you like the bonus content and you're listening to this, let us know. Leave a comment in the Land Geek Official Motivation and Wealth Creation Group so we know. Or well, otherwise, we'll just, we could just do a poll for sure. You know, there's this thing on, what's this? I forget, there's this TV, um, oh no, a uh, radio show. And I, I don't know if maybe you've all heard it, but at the end, if someone wins something, the person, one of these people that's famous, they leave a voicemail for them, but in their name. Maybe you should offer that, Mark. Leave someone a voicemail. Okay, I'll do so, it. Any li lucky listener who listens to this, and then you can be like, <laughs> you can leave the voicemail with your, with your voice. With my voice or your voice? No, your voice. So you like, I like doing I, your voice. If I won, they call me, be like, hey, this is your like voice as Zeno. Really? It's, your Zeno. Like Zeno. Zeno. But it's Mark Podolsky. Yeah, I, I told you I ran into somebody at the grocery store and they're like, are you Mark Podolsky? I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, I listen to your podcast. I love that guy with the Boston accent. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Who doesn't? He was wicked smart. There's no accent, by the way. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. You know, what was interesting. Is there, there were two people from Boston in, at boot camp. No accent. We're like, where's your accent? They didn't have a good answer. They must have, like, moved to the area. No. Born and raised in Massachusetts. There's different dialects, Mark, depending on the region. <laughs> okay. Big region. It's a big region. All right. Well, I know Scott Todd has a date with his Wawa uh, glazed uh, gla glazed or cake donut. Scott. Oh, come on, man! That's only in the morning. Cake. Only in the morning. <laughs> what are you it's, talking it's, about? You it's a cake donut. Like, it's it's the old fashioned, man. The old fashioned. That's the cake donut. Old fashioned. It's good, but only in the morning. But it's not Every a cake day? donut. It's like a glazy cake. Every day. I'm going to get you one. On the old I'm going to get you one. You're going to see, like, this is good. Is that after your Peloton ride? No, actually, see, this is the thing. And, Eric, if you look, man, I'm on our streak here. I'm, I'm like, I, I haven't worked on the app, but, like, I've been riding the bike uh, four days last week, two days this week so far. I skipped. You can see where I skipped boot camp, but it's there. Oh. And – and I'm making sure I burn enough calories to burn through that donut so it's like net neutral. So I eat the donut, I reward myself in advance, then I work out because then I feel guilty like I can't eat the donut now because you guys have got it under my brain. But yeah, I'm on a roll here, man. I'm trying to catch back up to Eric or, or some of the other land geekers that are on the Peloton like Jeff Dentmer. Jeez, that guy is an animal too. He's an animal. He is. I'm, animal. I'm almost. I'm almost worried he's gonna burn out. We gotta find Jeff Detmer's spirit animal. He was like. I looked yesterday. I think he was at 66 days in a row of of riding. It's insane. I don't follow him anymore because comparison is the thief of happiness. Uh, I've been I've been checking you out because somehow along the way you secretly passed me. Like I was so far ahead. I'm like I gotta wait for him. And oh, then that's he. Good, Scott. Thanks, man. See, I told you. Yeah. And so then, like, I noticed that I'm like, well, what is Mark doing? Holy cow, he's at 220 rides. And I was like at 150. I'm like, geez. So I'm in catch-up mode now, man. Yeah, but the 220 is really a little misleading because half of those are, are, are the, the, the cool-down ride for five minutes. It doesn't minutes. matter. It doesn't matter. It all, it's all, it all spins, man. It's all calories. All right, Eric, do you do a cool down? No, I do a stretch afterwards. Okay. Scott, what about you? Stretch. Bossman. Uh all right. I'm going I'm getting on the bike right now. Seriously. I'm going. <laughs> I'm, I'm I'm sick of feeling uh, right sick of, yeah. yeah. Sick of feeling bad about myself. I'm literally going right now. And I will uh I will stretch after. I was gonna I was gonna give Bossman a shout out today on the on Boxer to say like Scott. It's okay, man. It's okay. You beat me. We don't have to do this ever again. You beat me on that one fair and square. I won't challenge you. 
you live like you do your numbers. I'll do mine. We won't like go head to head, but maybe Mark, maybe we should do a land geek Peloton ride where we pick a ride and we all like go to see what, what ranking we come in. I like that. Let's, let's make it for a month out. Well, <laughs> we certainly won't tell Tate cause that's not fair. Don't what, what about what about when, when Tate's like, yeah, I'm gonna be getting on the bike, and we're like, oh, dude, you're getting a Peloton. He's like, no, a real bike. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's a good imitation. Wait, but there's there's a rumor. You guys don't know? No. Tate was looking at a Peloton. No way. Uh, no way. Yes. Right next to the surface. No. Oh there, man. There was no surface. Would he even break a sweat on a Peloton? Yes. Sure. He would? Uh, no, he, he would. Last year, maybe not, but now after being home and in rehab, yes. I, 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 was, I found the secret Scott Todd told me. I remember I was telling you the ones at my gym are 55 minutes, and he said that's way too long, so I just go late now. I come in 15 <laughs> minutes in, and I feel great. <laughs> I go late. I just that's walk in and be like, <laughs> yeah. you guys go too long. Excuse me, Mike, you're, you're 25 minutes late. No, you're 25 minutes too long. Exactly. And now I can handle it. I, I love those commercials where they show the person uh, cycling and they're like, what's your name's falling behind? Give her the hiss of shame. And they, they all hiss at her. And it's like, oh, go here. And you don't have to worry about like, do they give you the hiss of shame, Mike? When you, no, when you no, in. they don't even mind that I walk in with just my uh, new uh, running shorts on, or the biking shorts on. I'm going to get the one Tate said that has the, <laughs> the <laughs> like no WWE wrestling. <laughs> no yeah. shirt. Some, 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 Suspenders. Mimi, Mimi, what's your typical workout these days? Orange Theory, going 415 class. Dave and I. Together. Orange Theory. Yep. Nice. Yep. People love and that. I need to go because we got in the habit of eating desserts at boot camp. Oh, a little yeah. bite here, a little bite there. Yeah, and, and Dave doesn't mind being the only woman at Orange Theory. <laughs> oh, the only woman? <laughs> wow. You better end this podcast right now. End it now. End it now. <laughs> I'm. Uh, Wow. This is like it's like the between two geeks segment. No, it says no, here, uh, David Schmidt, that you and uh, your wife go to Orange Theory. Yeah, there's a couple of other professionals that go that he enjoys. Male professionals that he enjoys talking with. <laughs> okay, all right, we better end this before I get in real trouble. He's he's not a person to trifle with. All right, thanks everybody.